This video is one of a series produced by SeamlessAccess.org to educate and inform users about the work we're doing to deliver a simpler, privacy-preserving access experience. Seamless Access represents and comprises a diverse community of organizations and individuals. My name is Tim Lloyd. In addition to serving on the governance and outreach committees for Seamless Access, I also run Liblinks, a company specializing in identity and access for online resources. In this video, I explain how attributes enable research and education institutions to control any user information that is shared with third-party resource providers as part of federated authentication and protect user privacy. This video assumes a conceptual understanding of federated authentication. If you are unfamiliar with this concept, we recommend watching our brief introductory video on how federated authentication works first. Attributes is the term used to describe data about an authenticated user. An attribute release is the process by which that data is shared by an identity provider, such as a research and education institution, with a service provider, such as a publisher, as part of the authentication process. The format an attribute takes depends on the underlying technology. For example, Security Assertion Markup Language, or SAML for short, is the technology that underpins Shibboleth and Open Athens, but there are other technologies that support federated authentication, such as OpenID Connect, which is used by consumer-focused services like Facebook and Google. Attribute release is not required as part of federated authentication. An identity provider can simply assert that a user is an authorized member of their organization and do nothing more. In this case, the identity provider would provide an anonymous assertion identifier that would be associated by the service provider with this authentication response. You can see an example of one in the slide. As this identifier is uniquely generated for each authentication and contains no personally identifiable information, it ensures that user privacy is preserved. Here are some examples of the types of attribute that can be passed as a result of a successful user authentication. Affiliation attributes define the organizational association between the user and their home institution by means of employment, membership, enrollment in an educational program, etc. For example, the user is a faculty member. Entitlement attributes confirm the user's right to access a given resource based on criteria previously agreed with the service provider. For example, providing a URL for the licensing contract with the service provider. A pseudonymous identifier can be shared that is unique to each person and for each service provider. So it masks their true identity, but it does enable that user to be identified by the same service provider the next time that they visit, but can't be used to build a pattern of usage across service providers. This can be used to personalize a user's experience. And there are also personally identifiable attributes, such as your name and email address. Attributes are important because they give both sides of the authentication transaction greater control. This control can be valuable in a variety of different ways. For example, access control. An institution can choose to make a resource available only to users who are full-time staff and students, preventing, say, alumni or contractors from access. Cost control. A library can limit resource access to users with a certain role or from a certain department. Risk control. Pseudonymous identifiers allow users to benefit from personalization without exposing them to the risks and hassle of separately registering yet another username and password. The service provider can recognize a returning pseudonymous ID and personalize that user's experience accordingly without receiving any personally identifiable data, without needing to store their email address, and without asking for a password. Attribute release only happens after a user is authenticated. A service provider can't pull attributes. They only receive what the identity provider chooses to send. Attribute release is configured by the identity provider for each category of service provider. 
Library resource access is only one of a number of valuable use cases for federated authentication. For example, research collaborations involving researchers across different institutions would typically share some personal data, such as their name and email address. Institutional workflows that require users to confirm their institutional affiliation with third parties may involve scenarios where it is appropriate to share a much broader range of user data, such as authorizing the use of institutional funds for open access publishing fees. With library resources, a recommendation is for a much more limited set of attributes. Because the identity provider is in control, any special needs for attributes need to be agreed in advance so that attribute release can be configured appropriately. Having explained what attributes and attribute release are, let's talk briefly about the problem with them, which revolves around configuring access. To avoid identity providers having to manually configure exactly which attributes to send to each service provider, configuration is managed through entity categories. An entity category is a metadata tag used to group entities like service providers or identity providers so that a standard set of attributes can be built and applied at the group level rather than the individual entity level. However, the most well-known entity category in use today is the RefEd's Research and Scholarship, or R&S, entity category. RefEd's is the Research and Education Federations Group, which represents the Global Research and Education Identity Federations. This entity category only applies to service providers that are operated for the purpose of supporting research and scholarship interaction, collaboration, or management at least in part. It cannot be used for access to licensed online resources. This means that there are no standards for how identity providers should release attributes for the many use cases that fall outside of the R&S entity category, such as library access to licensed resources. Seamless Access is currently working on new standards that will provide new entity categories for this and other uses. To summarize, in this video we covered a definition of attributes with some examples, an explanation of why they are important for preserving user privacy, an introduction to how attribute release works, and the particular challenge that libraries face in configuring attribute release until the new standards that Seamless Access is working on have been adopted by the community. <music>